Hi there. How you doing? This is a multi. This multi actually is a new one that will be in an update coming next week to the library. And it is a variation on the original multi. This is what it sounded like originally. <laughs> Yes, you can change them. Going from that to this took 15 minutes, maybe. And 15 minutes more, and I got a slower tempo one. This is taking the, the, the techno, here, let's go one more time. 125 beats per minute from This will give you an idea of how far you can edit these very easily to go from that to this Mod wheel is changing pitch on parts. Uh, they've got nice lead. And again, <laughs> it came from this. Notice it plays and sounds amazing at 82 beats per minute. It's real time synthesis. There's so many libraries that you can buy that are loops of music production and they sound like this, they sound really good. But it has to be at the set tempo that you want. 125. If you've ever taken anything like that and tried to slow it down to 80 beats per minute, you get some really cool, interesting artifacts, and it's kind of cool. But this still has that sound. And watch, this is what's powerful with Omnisphere. Go to part four the arpeggiator. Let's shorten it to just before. And I'm going to show you all the multis that come with the Airwave library at the end of this video. The, the did I? Hi, my name is John Skippy Limcool. Thank you for being here. It's glad to see you all. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you are all enjoying Airwave. Oh my goodness. So many of you have bought that library. And it really is a shining example of what Omnisphere can do that hasn't really been provided in a strong voice before. There's other great dance patches inside of it, but to have this much legitimate trance stuff from a trance DJ that makes it is really anyway, exciting. The reason for this video, let's initialize this patch. Let's initialize the whole multi. I want to continue showing you cool things of Omnisphere 2, specifically new things so that you have an idea of everything you have to play with. And we've covered the synthesizer and the uh, editing features and so forth here in pretty good detail in the last video. So I'm going to look at the effects and the arpeggiator and multi. And multi is not new, but that's where I'm going to show you the airwave patches. And we'll talk about there's so many different ways you can use those patches and believe it, there's a ton of real, I shouldn't say and believe it or not. I'm going to show you cool ways of using those patches plus all the patches in the factory voicing. There's a ton if you go to type and if you're on the uh, All Spectre Sonics. If you scroll down here to BPM, oh my goodness, look at all the BPM. And there's a ton of patches. BPM guitars, these all can fit into the multis. So I'll show you that too. So stick around for the end. But to start with, we're going to start with... 
go to a sample because effects need to be done. It, you really hear the difference to a sample, maybe a little bit more in some cases uh, than distortion, than say a sine wave or something. So let's say guitar, and that is a new category over here. Guitars, acoustic. And uh, yeah, let's just do the classic nylon. It's nice and round. And so here's one of the factory patches of the classical guitar. You might want to go over here right away and bring this up to like say 32 notes of polyphony. So it won't cancel on you any. Um, then I want to show you this. So if you go to the effects section, like we talked about in the previous video, one of the coolest new features is not an effect. It's an ability. And that's the auxiliary. I could put a reverb, say proverb, nice long reverb. Let's see a nice delay. And you don't hear it yet, do you? I am aware of this. If you go to the A layer, There they are, right? Let's go modulate this with the wheel and give it full range. So I can be playing. Hear it ringing out? Maybe put a little ambient reverb on this. It's just a. So it's not totally dry, right? When I bring up the mod wheel. So that feature, that ability, didn't exist in Atmosphere 1. And it's wonderful. It allows you to do all sorts of fun things. Like if we go to the arpeggiator and turn this on, let's say random, two octaves. Since it's a guitar, make it short, go to the amp, and then go to the arp. Let's randomize the link. This is something new you couldn't do before. So it's going to be changing. In fact, let's make the link short so it has more range to play with. Okay. So between this, bring up the mod wheel when I want to have cool effects. Let's make it more pronounced. Let's put a distortion after all this so that when it comes in, you'll really hear it. Let's use one of the new Metal Zone distortions. Okay. Let's bring down the level. Let's do this. For the arpeggiator, let's make it be played as played with chords. Okay. Now with the mod wheel. So we can have it just hit one thing that has reverb into distortion and then go away. So that's new and that ability is really exciting. It's great. So that opens up all sorts of doors with the multi-mode because now you can have, there's examples in some of the multis where the mod wheel brings up delays on the hi-hats to give them this nice, really cool. And, it's, and it goes away when you take down the mod wheel, but they keep fading and feedbacking out. It's great. So that's really nice. Let's say no effect, no effect.
effect. Other uh, new effects under dynamic, there's a new precision compressor, which is really nice. It uses the sustain mode. It brings it up to be equal, which is a different way of compressing than the, than the, like the this way. I'm exaggerating this to, so you can hear it, but it seems more musical and, and a nicer for, for some acoustic instruments and stuff to use the uh, precision to sustain. Really nice. Uh, there's new uh, stomp compression. Sounds like a cheap stomp box, which is really cool. Comes from the different presets. is pretty much the same except the studio EQ is new and it's very nice and natural. Got a Q so you can get like a filtering. And what's really great with this is that on top of everything else it can do, it can also be a low pass filter with resonance. So if you need to just take the high-end sizzle off something, you can just use this. It's a little bit more uh, the, more reasonable than using like the, the power filter like you have to in the past. Um, or this can be and even more useful is the high pass filter right here. And that's used all the time from Laurent. He uses it all the time on his patches. Bring up the resonance so you can emphasize where the bottom is. That's really useful. That effect right there is truly a useful effect. Envelope filter is really cool. Two pages of parameters. Compressor, it has a compressor, it has the filtering, as well as this. All you hip hop guys right there going, ooh. Yeah, you can get that sweet spot right there. So that's using the throaty preset. Distortion has been greatly uh, optimized with new, the flame distortion is what we had before with the heat, burn, blaze, smoke. These are all new. So there's stomp box modeler, which has all these different types of stomp boxes. There's metal tone distortion. That's the acoustic guitar. Very flexible. Uh, Toxic Smasher is bit resolution. It's kind of a lot like what you'll find in the Wave Shaper, but now it's an effect. You have the four Shaper sets. And you have Force, Reduce, Filter, all this kind of stuff, just like you have over on the Wave Shaper page. Uh, some of the new amplifier effects include bass simulators. This goes all the way down to Thrift Shop Speaker, which I want to spend a minute on because this is really cool. We talked about it in the previous video. Um, it has mono stereo buttons. Here are all these different simulators for different spaces. And when you say like a bedroom, it's not just a... Phone. Those are great and really usable with a small amount. So those are nice new effects, really useful. Modulation, this is where you get the Selena, which is this new compressor that gives you the Selena uh, string. Stereo 
or mono. A lot of these effects, be aware, they call up in mono. So you can turn them to stereo really easy. Okay. There's uh, some additional effects. The, the analog vibrato was new. Go here to the presets. sounds just like it it's really nice creative is where you get to the really fun more processor heavy especially with interspace quad resonators is four resonating filters that can self oscillate at different pitches so Depends on what you put through this. Like the guitar doesn't work so good. But if we went to the synth to the noise. Let's shape this a little bit more. Now you go through these. And you really hear a difference. And it's unfortunate, but you can't modulate this pitch. In, in the very first version of Omnisphere 2, you could, but uh, that was removed, sadly. And then we get to Inner Space. And this is where it gets really interesting, because this is convolution reverb in a really creative noise. So it's fun to want to use this on everything, but just be aware, this is taking up about 15% of my processor. And then you can double it. And it's 25% of my processor. So it can be very processor heavy, but you have all these really cool ambient spaces. Resonance. Such creative fun plus, I mean, so much right here to play with in this one new effect. Just awesome. Now if we were to change back to the sample instead of the noise. Interesting. Also important to notice that you have EQ, so I could find something that's close go over here and emphasize certain frequencies and this seems to be pre-EQ so you can make the sound brighter before it hits so from this we could go to space deep So it's balanced. New effects. Really cool new creative effects. It's awesome to include those on top of the new distortions, new EQ, new compressor. Delays are pretty much the same. Reverbs are pretty much the same. Imager is still the utility. So the, uh, the combination of a new auxiliary, the new effects, and then one more thing that's really cool in the effects section, and that is that you can modulate any parameter no matter what layer it's on inside of Omnisphere now. You couldn't do that before. It had to be layer A or layer B only. So this is a common, right? I'm on the common page. Have my guitar. Modulate this with the wheel. And if at the same time I want to modulate this with the wheel and have this be a really huge spring reverb, 
And let's have the width be really wide, bringing the effect up high so it's nice and... So right there, I've got all sorts of new things to play with. Let's have a cool delay into the Selena. Modulation. Slow this down. Make a stereo. keeps ringing. Love it. Bring the feedback so it rings out even longer. So you can take parts and be really creative and do new things that you couldn't do before with these new features. All right. Awesome. Initialize. Uh, let's go over here. Let's load a patch. Let's load something uh, from the new library because it's using arpeggiators all over the place. So we can take a look at... Here's a straightforward one. So on the arpeggiator, the main things that are new would have to do with the ability to modulate these parameters and to have speed. I don't think we had speed before, but now... Speed up, you can slow it down. So you have speed control. You have length, which I love. And this is blue already, so it's modulated with an LFO. Let's unmodulate that. And you can say random. And now it will randomly change different lengths of time. So that's cool. The other thing that's really fun and new is the ability to go here and change the pitch. That's like your classic step sequencer where you can... So the ability to change pitch, the ability to modulate the length, to have a speed knob that you can speed up and slow down for cool effects. You know, all sorts of abilities and possibilities are very exciting. So that is the arpeggiator and the effects section and the new abilities that are in Atmosphere 2. And they're huge abilities. The ability to change pitch on each step is not a small... That's really cool because that opens up all sorts of doors. That, that opens up the doors so that in this new library, there's all these bases that I call bass because it's just one pitch. Right? Then there's riffs. And these are riffs where it's playing a whole... That's because of the transpose. So that ability in the arpeggiator is wonderful. It just opens up a huge door. So you have open doors now with the effects and with the arpeggiator, with the new synth engines. Uh, that's why everybody is saying it's such a great upgrade. Now, multi-mode has been around since version one, and I think most people didn't get it. Um, I don't think I really got it. You know, I make combinations for cork synthesizers all the time, these, these big demo-esque things that are fun to interact with, but I hadn't really thought about trying to get Omnisphere to do that, partly because of the processor power, because these sounds, because of the quality of the sounds and the effects, you got CPU issues, um, and it doesn't take long before you start running out. And so I have to tell you, and I, I'm also going to kind of apologize we made these multis, and some of them completely take every ounce of power your computer has. Um, they sound cool, and so they're worth keeping around and stuff, but just be aware. Um, there's a really cool chapter 
uh, here's a cool tip if you don't know this. If you go down here to the reference guide, this is the very bright owner's manual. It's hurting my eyes almost. <laughs> this is the owner's manual for Omnisphere 2 that's on the net. And if you go down here to support, to concepts, there is a chapter called Concepts in CPU Optimization and Conservation. This is something you need to start reading about and thinking about because these tips right here are going to help you get these things to work on your computer if it's not working on your computer in some cases. Because there's so much happening with some of these. It's just mind-blowing. But I want to play them. So this is, we're kind of like stopping the feature demo part of Omnisphere 2. And I'm going to show you the rest of the library because we didn't get a chance when Laurent was with me uh, via Skype to do this. So I'm going to show you real quickly. I'm going to play them. And then we're going to come back and... Uh, I'll I'll start. To, we'll, we'll we'll look at some of the abilities and stuff after that. But I, I'm I'm going to try and stay focused and just play them first. It's so hard because I want to show off so many cool things that are happening in each one of these. But I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid doing that. I'm setting it to 128 beats per minute, and I'm gonna bam. New things. Ambient, Chimesque. And this one totally takes my computer down <laughs> because there's uh, granular and I believe there's also inner space. So we're just gonna leave it like that. You can explore that one if you wish. Just be aware your computer, it won't blow up your computer. It's not gonna kill it per se, but it might not play and sound very good. And I apologize. And maybe we can optimize those in this coming week. Okay. I love this next one. This is so cool. This could be a complete Daft Punk album or song. I there's songs that there's there for seven minutes it does this, but check this out, it's so cool. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move the mod wheel slowly up. Ready? All the way up. And I hear crackle. Sorry. Ah, oh, so cool. Uh, Berliner Trance, 1993. This is fun because the mod wheel will take it from this vibe. Vintage Trance. Okay. Such great detail. I love the little pitchy stuff. So. Bro Step is the dubstep attempt. And it's it's kind of interesting. Spring reverb to the max. 
uh, version two. Okay. Ich bin klein, kein Birdliner. And this one where it's set to trigger modes. We'll talk about this in a minute. That means I can't play out of time. Everybody plays in time. If you go to some of these other ones that I was showing, um, I believe this one doesn't have, yeah, nothing set to triggers. You can get out of time, really. You can play fast, which you can't do with Ich bin kein Berliner, but it won't play out of time. And we'll talk about that trigger mode in a minute. Leon Express. This one with splits. Got the bass down low, see how these are windowed? This is what stack mode gives you that normal mode won't give you. And we'll talk about all that in a minute, because we'll cover that. Northern Exposure, love this one. Bring up the mod wheel. So cool. Stop that. It's not even funny. Uh, one stop chill out. I should slow this down. I should probably point this out with everything. Let's go back to Northern Exposure. This is really cool. So one, there's all these sample libraries you can buy of samples and they include Rex versions where it's been chopped up with Recycle and so forth. And those can be sped up and slowed down. And you have five or 10 beat per minute range that you can change and it sounds okay. Um, if you take 128 beat per minute groove, like say this, hats if you take that and you say I want to make it 80 beats per minute if it's a sample it's gonna sound like crap I, I don't no matter what technology we have the transients and stuff all start to fall apart and sound really randomly weird uh, but since this is synthesis since these are the sounds are being played by the arpeggiator at 80 beats per minute just what Listen to that. It's so beautiful. Just, you can hear the depth. It's so beautiful. I'm a kid in a candy store when I play these sounds, I have to tell you. Uh, one stop chill out. This one totally will take your computer down, and I apologize. We will try to optimize these, because they should be not quite so out there. Um, let's see, let's get this back to be 110 beats per minute for this. Signature Laurent Airwave drum brakes. Modulo brings up this nice reverb crack. Okay. Uh, signature two. Okay, I'm gonna skip sketching breaks. We're gonna come to that in a minute. Stupid demo song. He was showing the Casio VL tone in our previous video when we did this with Laurent in the video. And he loves that thing so much that he modeled it <laughs> in Omnisphere. So if you play F. And if you bring up the mod wheel, it changes parameters to swing. So you have the swing inversion or the straight. It's great. Uh, vectorize grid. 
Give it a second. Huge. Oh my god. And what's great, since it's synthesis and arpeggiators and LFOs and envelopes, play. It works. The whole range of the keyboard, it doesn't crap out. It sound bad. Uh, Trance and Dice. This actually needs to be like 132 beats per minute. Okay, Altamayesque. Uplifting Trancer. Up higher. Mod Wheel. much power to have. Now these I can show you a little bit of. This one I can't. Um, it's CPU power. Today is forever. These are things I created that show off zoning where you have down low. And then you have another area on the keyboard. W, Vanilla Skyscraper is another example of splits where you have a, an accord. And then up here is a two no measure the noise sweep. Uh, other abilities you can do in the multi-mode. This is where I want to start talking about multi-mode. This is using the CC mode. Back over a year ago when I interviewed Eric, and his favorite thing was the CC mode in the multi-mode. And um, I've played with it before. I know what it does, but it really shines with these. Because what it does is your modulation wheel or whatever controller number you set here is going to sweep through the sounds. So I can make sounds appear and disappear based on mod wheel location. So I'm going to take and play a sound. One note. Okay. Move mod wheel. And up here it's a pad. As I bring the mod wheel down. So you can do all of this from one multi and the mod wheel. That's crazy. Okay, and then walk into the tent is another example where I have one groove. This is like if you've ever been to raves, you have multiple tents, and each tent has a DJ with speakers pointing in a certain direction, and there's a certain place between tents where the two are mixed together, and some people just have to hang out there because the mix of different styles and everything is just a, a beautiful cacophony, right? So here's a... Then you start walking to the other tent. the kick drum. I have the kick drum pitch EG getting more intense in this last bit. 
Delta goes from the flat 808, actually like the flat 909, to a 909 that's got a little on the attack. That's just changing a few parameters that the module is changing on the kick drum. Okay, so those are the multis. Oh, there's one more I want to show you, and that's this one, the, the sketching breaks. So here it is in its original form. Right? Well, I was playing around because I wanted to uh, show you guys how to, how to change these because we're going to do that in a minute. And I made two variations. So this is the version that comes in the library right now. I'm going to slow it down to 80 beats per minute. So I took this, slowed it down, and made it swing. <laughs> so here you go. This, this will be available for you to be able to solo and go, well, it's got the lead sound up here. And you can solo to just play. No, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And um, then you've got the ability to go to the bass, the, to the synth bass. And I have a cool trick. I took these guys and the bass goes down in pitch and the the chord, check this out. I This is a Laurent trick. I took the uh, detune of two of the chords of the harmonia up in pitch with the mod wheel. So you can have a little side chord whenever you want. Expanding what you can do with these. And then there's a, one more version, because I was listening to a silly, cool rap song. I was like, you know, that'd be a fun style to have that I'm going to release next week. Uh, we're going to optimize the multis. There's a kick drum clicking issue I want to fix, and I'll include these multis. So <laughs> this is cool. For the hap, this is for the rappers in the crowd. This is uh, that same groove at 106 beats per minute. Just by changing parameters, I took it to... Darkens the distortion. Okay. Okay. So those abilities are there. Now I want to show you real quickly, initialize multi, how fun it is to build these. You need the Airwave library for the drums to start with because there isn't another place in the library I've found where you can go very easily to part one, Airwave, go down the list to the drums, and go kick, and there it is. And they're all cool variations. <laughs> that was so huge. I like that one. I'm going to use that one. Now, I'm going to go to multi-mode, and I'm going to turn on stack. This way, I don't have to go over here and change MIDI channels. I can just start layering. So I go to part two. And let's go to all spectrosonics, to the BPM, 
Let's add a Spectrosonics patch. Let's say uh, leads. What do we got here? EDM trumpet. Let's get to 128 beats per minute. Take it up an octave. Let's go to part three. Let's go to Omnipulse. This is all nothing but BPM stuff. Let's go to uh, Chimes. Every one of the libraries that I sell has BPM stuff, so. Now, on this sound, it's got too much low end, right? The really quick fix was that new effect that we just saw. Uh, I don't need, let's say, the EQ uh, of that type. I want to use the Studio EQ because I can set this to high pass filter and. That way it doesn't get in the way of the bass. Without this, it's just super muddy. So that right there saved a big problem. And let's let's do this. Let's go multi. We can do this from the patch page too. We can go over here to uh, main and hit solo. I like that. Maybe let's go to A. Let's use a... Let's randomize. Well, this isn't arpeggiated, so... I'll fold in. This was some cool change. Bring the delays. Now, here's a cool trick. So let's go to part three. Let's say, copy this part. Go to part four. Say, paste this part. And let's take the whole part and go over here and transpose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have a fifth. Turn this down. Okay. Now let's go to the airwave. Category, not multi, we want to go to part five. Let's say airwave type, let's say all. Let's go to the bases. Ah, you don't hear it, do you? That's because by default, stack is only set to turn on four parts. So just right click and say turn on part five and If I want another part, add part six. Let's go to part six and let's have it be toxic atmosphere. Go to the BPM bases. Let me get this last idea and then I'm out of here into your head. 
So we've turned on stack mode. So it's ignoring MIDI channels, right? And we've been able to quickly audition and build up something. Right? Okay. At this point, you could turn off stack mode. And now you can go to each track in your sequencer and go down the list of MIDI channel one through six and play each of the tracks in doing what you want it to do. That's how you can get it to not be a one note thing that everybody's talking about and complaining about. Like, oh, you just play one note and it does everything. Um, it's great for auditioning and finding things. That's the thing with these multis I want to get into your head. Call up Art of Trance or the Arp of Trance, right? Okay, so you can go in, turn stack mode off. It's all on different MIDI channels so you can start working with it. So now MIDI channel one. So if I hit record my sequencer, let's go. And turn on click. recorded a silly little bit of diddiness and let's go and quantize it really quick I'm hitting quantize it's not quantizing so let's go 16th notes turn on loop and I'm gonna say you know let me pop this over so you can see what I'm doing uh just have this like this so you can just see that part I'm gonna go over here to track and I'm gonna say New track with next MIDI channel. And if I keep doing that, I could say new track with next MIDI channel, which is con it's control and return. So I, there's two, there's MIDI channel three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I could go to two, three. Here's the bass. And at this point, maybe I go, hmm. I don't know if I want that bass. So I could go over here, go to Airwave. I'm on part four, and I could start looking for a different bass. And if I don't like the effects, then you might need to go to the multi because there's effects on the master, so we could turn. Uh... And it's being hit pretty hard here, so let's turn down our gain. So let's do this. I'm going to set this to be like two majors in so I get a little. So I'm recording different things now for these two parts. There's two completely different lines going on. Now, if I want. I could use this kick drum. I could go. Right? Or I could use a different kick drum. I could go to Mega Macho Drums and use kick drums. I could use different drums. I could use different things. I can go to the part two, which is the hi hats. So I'm playing totally different things than I could have done if I'm just playing down, if I go back here to MIDI channel one, and I go back to stack mode and turn it on, right? I've already broken into its own world now. Okay, so just get it into your heads. These multis are templates to get you into a certain direction and now you can modify it. Go to each of these layers, 
change the parameters that you've learned about in all these other Omnisphere videos. You remember all the ability to edit, right? These are templates to start from for dance music. And if you have some of my other aggressive libraries, like if you have like that, that bass sound, go to Toxic Omnisphere and you can have that be your On the arpeggiator. Off you go. So you get the idea, okay? So, hope this helps you. Hope you get to see the power both of the new features and this new library. This new library opens up new windows in using multis. Uh, a couple of people emailed me saying, do I really need a DAW anymore? And you do. I mean, you could do similar things like this with Contact 5 and other things that can play lots of different MIDI channels of big sounds. But it is really cool to have all of this in Omnisphere and have it be able to be synthesis and modify. So, okay, hope I got this into your head. May it open new doors and may you need new patches because that's why I'm here. All right, talk to you in the next video. See you later.